from recording, by the way. Just say 64 holes. <laughs> I think a mosquito bit me in the butt. Hi, welcome to Cassie to Tori. Today we will be working on the back end of the house or the front end of the trailer depending on which way you look at it. We realized when we put everything together that it wasn't quite square. I'm going to go through and take some things apart, put them back together until everything comes together nice and square so that way when we bolt everything down we won't have any problems in the future. Everything's a learning experience. We're definitely learning a lot along the way. Patience is one of the things that we're learning. You gotta be patient and take our time with some things. More things that we're learning along the way. Drilling through metal might be easy for some people, but we're finding that it's kind of hard because we're drilling straight through the wood into the metal. And so we're using like a regular all-purpose bit. We realized that we were going too fast. We didn't use oil, so the bits burned out. The drills burned out. We also had a little bit of problem with the water getting underneath our tarp. So we had some mildew that grew. So we had to take care of that for this section. I still have to finish drilling through the center, attach the bolts in the center. That requires a longer bit and it's really hard to find a longer bit that's titanium. We've only been able to find the black oxide. Those are going to work, but probably not work as well. Let's get started. So I'm working on attaching the subfloor to the trailer. We're using 3 8 inch hex bolts at over 60 spots so that will allow us to have a nice secure attachment and prevent the house from flying off while we're driving down the road. You can see here, this is the top of one of the hex bolts. We've got a washer in there. We've countersunk it so that way the subfloor sheathing can sit right over top of it. On the edges, we're using 5 inch bolts. What you don't see yet is two spots for the hex bolts attaching the trailer along the metal runners. Those are going to be six inch long bolts going all the way down.
drilling these holes, we use a multi-step process. It's just something that I found works best for what we're doing here. Step one, bore out a hole with your one inch paddle bit. Step two, drill out the wood with the 3 8 inch that you're gonna be using later. Step three, use the quarter inch to create a guide hole for this 3 8 inch. Step four, go back to your 3 8 inch bit and drill out the metal that you just drilled out with the quarter inch. Step five, drill the last hole with your extra long 3 8 inch bit. During each step of the metal drilling, I add a little bit of oil just to help cool down the bit and keep it from dulling faster. Now that I've finished drilling and putting the bolts through, it's time to attach them. You can see here on the flanges, we've attached five inch bolts with a series of washers, lock washer and nut. And these bolts, the threads didn't go up all the way. So we had to add a few more washers there, create a nice tight bond. What I'm actually gonna do now is crawl underneath this trailer with all my supplies and attach the rest the bolts to the trailer. It's a pretty tight fit. So now we're underneath the trailer. You can see those bolts coming through that I just drilled. Now I have to finish attaching them. You can see on this side, I've already attached those bolts. So now I have to do the same with these. There's the first one. Washer, lock washer, regular nut. And then take an impact driver and secure it on. Now that's not going anywhere. Finally finished attaching the trailer. It took us about a month. We attached 64 holes out of the 70 that we needed to attach. It's okay that we only attached 64 holes. It's not moving. It's not going anywhere. Uh, most tiny houses only have a few points and not 64. So 64 is overkill. Yeah, so now it's attached and we can start doing the insulation and then the sheathing on top. Like and subscribe to our channel and see you next time.